Powered by Riverside FM. All right, guys, this week for the Browns Backers interview series, we get to chat with Brian from the Greater Cincinnati Browns Backers. Brian, thanks for joining us. How are you today? I am wonderful. Thanks for inviting me along. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. I know uh, everybody's time is valuable, so thanks for taking a little bit of yours to to join us and talk about the Browns here. But um, uh, to get started here, tell us a little bit about your chapter down there. So I am Brian Clifton. I'm the president of the Greater Cincinnati Browns Backers. I've been the president now for about four years. I took over for our president, Anne, and unfortunately, she took over for our president, Joey, who refounded, who passed away who refounded the club back in 1999. It was a club if in the mid eighties, all the way up to 96 when they disbanded all the clubs. And then we got the chapter back in 1999. We were one of the first 10 chapters. I think that was approved by the, by the Cleveland Browns. Nice. Nice. And so uh, how many members are you guys up to right now? Did you say we are at about 250 members. Um, some, it fluctuates every year. Some years we've had over 300, some years we have 250. I think with the success, we'll see a bigger turnout next year, which will be great. And, uh, Absolutely. and then we always meet at a uh, slats pub in blue ash, Ohio on the corner of Kenwood and Cooper. And, uh, we always meet there. Nice. And I know, uh, slats, uh, your guys' logo, um, I believe is like the, the skyline of Cincinnati and slats is, uh, uh, kind of written there in the bottom right corner, if I'm not mistaken. Right. That is correct. Yeah. So I, I came up with that logo cause we had a, we had a dog with brass knuckles and it just didn't really represent the city. <laughs> and that's one of the yeah. things I tell all these presidents and that when they're coming up with me, coming to me and going, what kind of ideal do I have? Cause I really like your idea. I'm like, you got to incorporate something with the city that you're in. So I took the city of Cincinnati skyline, kind of boxed it around, moved some, uh, moved some of the buildings around so they wouldn't copyright me or whatever else that they had to do. And then I turned the four, uh, the 471 Big Mac bridge sideways and it made it look like a dog. So it has like two eyes and a mouth. If you like really look at it closely and then I colored it in the Browns because we dominate the city always. Nice. Love it. Yeah. And so I will, I will <clears throat> let you know at this point that my, uh, astute, uh, co-host here really, really has some disdain for the city <laughs> of Cincinnati. Um, and so it's, if, if it's playful disdain, if anybody, uh, from your guys' group follows the show at all, just know that when we talk about Cincinnati and he talks about how he doesn't like anybody from Cincinnati, he means anybody except for you guys, <laughs> not the Browns backers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so well, the, the um, thing with Cincinnati though is they're all fair weather fans. When they're winning, everybody's a fan. It's all who days. It's everything else. When they're losing, it's crickets down here. You don't uh, you don't hear anything. I ran into a uh, J W Johnson while I was at Joe Thomas's introduction. He was like, "What's it like being in hostile territory?" I was like, "It's only hostile when they're winning," and that's like <laughs> few and far between. So I'm like, "It's really not an issue down there." It's probably pretty quiet this year, I would imagine. It's really quiet this week, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, but I, I, so part of the reason that we're doing this series is um, obviously we want to talk to Browns fans all over the country and all over the world. Um, but we also wanted to highlight some of the great things that the Browns backers do, um, mainly the community service and charity work that you guys are involved with. So um, what do you guys have uh, going on as far as community service and charity work with your chapter? Well, we so four years ago, we used to, well, years ago, we used to do a thing called member of the year. And when, unfortunately, when our uh, president passed away, we called it the McGregor award. So that we, I reintroduced the backer of the year. So the backer of the year, the winner gets to pick the charity that all of our 50, 50 split the pots, raffle stuff like that goes to. So this year, our winner picked uh, a wounded warrior organization. So that's where at the end of the year, we'll tally up all the money next year at the very first game. We'll have a representative come up to the game, um, come up to the club, receive the check, and then we'll announce the new winner. And then that person gets the chance to pick the the new one. So we've, we've donated to uh, the dragonfly foundation here in Cincinnati. 
We've donated to an animal rescue kennel. We've donated to a lot of stuff. American Red Cross is the next one that's getting the check. Just stuff like that. So nice. if you're doing a season long kind of raffle, those are probably pretty significant contributions, are they not? Well, we do. A, well, we do what's called a club party. So we pay for the alcohol and we pay for uh, some food and the op. So we pay for beer and then we pay for the food, and then we have club parties and stuff. That's where most of the raffles come in. We do that two times a year, but we do fifty fifty every time we're there. Nice, got it. Nice. Uh, and so, uh, you know, obviously the game is in Cincinnati this week. Uh, it just doesn't really mean anything. But that Cincinnati's it means out absolutely of nothing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Cincinnati's out. The Browns are in, and they their seating can't change. Obviously, so um, I mean, with that being said, I'm sure you guys probably still have some sort of party going on down there, and we're all Browns fans, so I'm sure there's going to be quite a few people going to it. Yep. So now that they finally gave us a date and time, and decided this new flexing the schedule the last week really hurts Browns backers clubs because the very last party is like the last game of the year could be a big party. It could be stipulations behind it but now now it's like okay what are we playing for this week so now i gotta try to plan a party in six days for a backer bash that we do so every game before the browns uh Bengals game we do what's called uh cincinnati's backer bash last year we had over 400 people show up to copper and flame but this year we are uh teaming up with the short vine browns backers so they're located on the uc campus real close to it um, Seth's been really good to us during COVID years and stuff. It just seemed like a no brainer to have it at their place. So their owner, Kelly has been nice enough to let us be, uh, hosting there with them. So that will be going on Saturday, January the 6th from 4 PM to 7. It's just people that are getting into town. A lot of people like to meet the bus in the Cincinnati also meet the bus people. And then they go, where are we supposed to go after that? So it gives them an opportunity to hang out. We've got. We'll have raffles. We'll have split the pot there. Um, the big raffle item that the Browns donated to us was Nick Chubb's signed mini helmet. So we'll nice. be raffling nice. that off. Um, and then we'll have like drink specials. She made up an orange and brown shot for three bucks. So I'm like, I can do orange and What's brown shots all day. I have no idea. She won't tell me. She said it's a surprise. <laughs> Sometimes it's, surprise. it's good just I to like have that. a surprise, you know? But she, she said they're yeah. orange or brown shots for three bucks. So I'm like, that sounds good. I like that. And then uh, <laughs> we'll have they'll have like discounted uh, Sam Adams and Great Lakes because Great Lakes is the big brewery up in Cleveland. Sam Adams is the big brewery here in Cincinnati. So they've joined up to give us discounted on prices. They gave us a bunch of swag that we can hand out to people. The Browns have given me a bunch of swag to hand out to people. So it's going to be somewhat of a fun time, except for the game's going to be meaningless. So hey, sometimes sometimes that's a good thing though because everybody doesn't have to worry about catching the game. They could really let loose at, at, at your event. True, no, that's true too. Yeah, well, and there's then, some uh, celebration there too because when's the last time the Browns have had a game late in December where it didn't matter? Because matter. It didn't matter at all. <laughs> well, it'd been really nice if Miami could have took care of business last, yesterday. That would have been really nice. Then we would have had something sure. to be playing for this week. But it, but in hindsight too, I guess it's really good because. Now it gives the starters almost 14 days of rest that, you know, they get a week off now that they can rest their bodies and stuff. Then they're going to go into practices for uh, for the playoffs. And now we're as opposed to if we were playing this week, we're turning right back around and playing maybe Saturday night or Sunday or maybe Monday night to try to go have the starters that, you know, we already have a, the majority of our our uh, roster is on injured reserve. The last thing we need to do is have another starter go out. So it's just smart to sit them all. Now we're yeah. going to have Dr Jeff Driscoll like leading the charge of the Browns against his old team, the Bengals. So that's just comedy all in itself right there. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it, and it's actually all of this is a great segue to the football side of things. Um, so let's, let's actually uh, back it up a little bit here and let's start with, uh, the season so far. So uh, we'll start first with the game this past week. How did you think they looked against the Jets? Well, I was up there for it. So I went to the game. I drove up, tailgated with the Nats tailgaters, and then went to the game. It was electric. That was the most electric. I try to go to two games a year. That was the most electric and fun game I have ever been to since 1999 when we came back. That was an absolute the, – the atmosphere was insane. What they did with the laser light show and your cell phones, and that was amazing. It, it was just a great – it was great. And then we jumped out in front of them real fast and just pretty much ended the game in the first quarter and said, we're done. We're just – this is how it's going to be. 
So yeah. that you know they wanted the playoffs. The playoffs were like right in their window, and they wanted it. They were hungry for it. They got it quick. So even when the refs came watched- up with new rules. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> true. So when they did that, the the light show, did they put instructions on the jumbotron for that? Like everybody turning your cell phone lights on, or how did how did I guess yeah, they did that? that and they let us know ahead of time, and you, know, you have to have the app. So it was on the app, and you got emails, so you you were pretty well rehearsed and informed of what you needed to do. And it seemed like everybody was really logged in because it seemed like everybody's camera was going off, just not like randoms here and there. So they did it in displays. They did it in like random bursts. And that was just really neat. And then at the third quarter, when they had that 12 year old kid coming in with the introduction to Thunderstruck with all the lights strobing and everything, that was just insane. That was great. So yeah. they really did. Yeah, so a- kudos to the Browns and the Corey and all them other people that are involved with it. That was absolutely amazing. It was cool to see on TV as well. It was, it was really fun to watch. Neat. It was um, better I- live. I was- yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure it was. <laughs> uh, no, and so uh, you know, we both just mentioned we we watched it at home, um, and I will say this: so at home, after that first quarter, like you said, things really uh, slowed down a little bit, and it was a little boring to watch it on TV <laughs> with the lack of offense on both sides. Um, at the stadium, was it more of like we jumped out in front? Now everybody parties the rest of the time. Is that yeah, the crowd was, crowd was electric. Where I was, uh, where I was sitting at, so I was sitting on the. Um, the Myers end zone side of uh, the stadium. And mm-hmm. I was in the area where they started the Flacco chants all the time. So I was down there. Nice. I was up by where, uh, where um, Chubb smashed the guitar. So I was up way up a little bit more in that first section, 148. But I mean, it, we were still just chanting and being loud and saying playoffs and screaming and everything else. So the crowd was still being loud and entertaining and, and really into it, even though the game got boring there in the second and third quarter. Well, and I'll say this: that came across on TV. I <clears throat> uh, my my wife and I were watching, and um, she was like, "Why is it so loud?" Is it, like <laughs> I, she said, "Usually NFL games don't sound like this." And I said, "You're right. Usually NFL games don't sound like this." So um, it was pretty evident on TV that that crowd was really uh, really into things and, and just having a good time. Now, did, did you stick around afterwards as the players were kind of making their rounds and doing laps around the stadium? We did not because this is I had some events happening in Cincinnati that I had to get back to. So we just went ahead and bailed from the stadium. And then we went down to the pit and tried to get out of the pit and wasted another hour of our lives trying to get out of the pit. <laughs> yeah. so, and then... No, uh, I, 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 uh, that's fantastic, though. I mean, the, like like we said, the game was uh, it was awesome to see. Uh, and I think one of the coolest things about this game was that, uh, like you said, not only did we have a chance to clinch the playoffs, but they came out right away and said, uh, "It's not a chance to clinch the playoffs. We're we're, we're going to be in the playoffs, and everybody's yeah. going to know it." <laughs> I think one of the cool things that just happened at the end too was a few things like one and Joku going up to the crowd. So that little boy that he shook and said, we're going to the playoffs, really good friends of mine. I was just talking to him earlier and uh, at the Nats tailgate and stuff. I know his mom, his mom's uh, part of the Xenia Browns backers grandmother that took him as uh, one of the members, one of the officers of the Xenia Browns backers. So we're all like really tight and close with each other. So to see Njoku interact with him just brought like a yeah. smile to everybody's face. And then to watch him hop over the barricade and down somebody's beer, which I was like, <laughs> I don't know if I would have done that. But I wish I would have known I'm that. I'm sure he's he got a fine coming his way. I'm sure he's got enough said stomach coming in his way. But, uh, <laughs> but the, if I would have known that he was going to be out back when the players let out, that he was going to take shots with fans, I'm sure I would have stuck around and done a shot with him. Because when's the last, I mean, other than 2020, you know, and that was kind of like a, we were on, I think we were on, were we at home or were we on the road when we clinched it? We were at home and then we went to Pittsburgh or we were in Pittsburgh and then we went, had to go back to Pittsburgh. <clears throat> I don't remember. I think we were at home when we clinched it. I think we were at home when we clinched it. Was, it was like no one there. Yeah. 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 It, was, then, it was COVID year too. Yeah. Though. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, yeah, I think we were at home and then we had to go <laughs> to Pittsburgh. That be at home now to clinch it and to know that we have the chance for a number one seed and a first round bye. And uh, that was just, for some reason, it was more entertaining and more electric and more. It felt real this time, and to be at eleven wins with a chance to go twelve wins, which hasn't happened since man. When was the last time we had twelve wins? Like eighty five, eighty six, somewhere it's around been, there. Not since ninety nine, that's for sure. Yeah, well, we haven't. <laughs> it's been a long time. I think our best one was what ten wins. 
since 1999. I think it's our best record, 10 and 6. I think that. I think they were eleven and five. The Baker, the twenty twenty. I think they were year too. Yeah. going in, but I th- we've never we have not won twelve games. No, since right. ninety nine. Yeah, no, so a, it is. It, it's wild. Uh, it's been a long time. It's been a very well, long time, and and to know that we're going into week eighteen, being able to rest instead of week eighteen, wondering if 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 we win and then these seven stipulations happen, we might be able to get into the playoffs. The fact that we are actually yeah. in on week 17 is just, it's remarkable. But it's like the one first of the things I told the Browns, I'm like, one of the two things that's got to happen with these Browns backers clubs to get us members and to get us all hyped is you either got to go deep in the playoffs or we're going to have to have back-to-back winning seasons because we haven't had back-to-back winning seasons yet uh, since 1999. And we, ha- we've, Done first, uh, we've gotten out of the first round beating Pittsburgh, but we couldn't get out of beating Kansas City, even though that was kind of a lame game too, because you can't do a headshot on Higgins and then not call it and then call a fumble out of bounds. So <laughs> that was that was nice officiating again. I don't want to be fine though. We talk about that a lot. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that was yeah, that was a, that turned the game right there. Sure I always did. point to that. Anytime somebody complains about the refs, I just show the picture. I'm like. What about this? Yeah. <laughs> what, what happened here? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> no, but so uh, let's look, let's kind of look at this week's game a little bit. Um, how are they? I mean, obviously they're out of it. Uh, and we talked about how the Bengals fans are, are pretty quiet this year. Um, when they do speak up, is it just kind of, uh, it's just an off year. Uh, Joe Burrow's coming back next year. We're going to be just as good as we were. Or is it like, a, does the town want to fire everyone? <laughs> uh, the town is more like, oh, another year, another like this. It, it, there, it just varies from a rot, like a large uh, range of uh, excuses and upsetfulness and everything else. Right now, I'm trying. I'm going online right now to see what the uh, the Bengals tickets are going for now because I was I looked at them the other day and I think the cheapest ticket was like thirty seven dollars. So I'm trying to see what they're going to go for now because I might just end up going to the game just to be fun, anyways. Yeah, I I will say this. uh, I've I've you know we've had our ups and downs as Browns fans, and I'm a little embarrassed to admit this, but I've seen Browns tickets uh, for the last game of the season when we were well out of the playoffs, and it was like snowing or something, literally be a dollar. So yeah, <laughs> well yeah, um, literally, I mean, if it's snowing up in Cleveland, yeah, people aren't going to go to it right now. The cheapest ticket is sixty one dollars. No. So I mean, I'll yeah, probably so. end up going to the game nice. just to support the well, Browns and scream for the Browns. Absolutely, and you just get to rub it in in uh, Cincinnati's face when our <laughs> our backups to our backups to our backups to our backups beat them. So, <laughs> yep. Um, but no. So, what what is the city down there um, besides the Browns backers? Obviously, what is what is the Cincinnati faithful uh, think about the Cleveland Browns? Are they talking about us at all, or is there any any anything at all being said? Some, some fans are glad that the the Browns are in. A lot of them are happy that the well the Steelers aren't officially out out yet, but they're we're just happy that they're not going to get in. Hopefully, um, they got a long road to get in. They got to hope. A couple of the NFC South and I think the Broncos or something have to lose. So they got a long road to get in, but they still have a possibility. They're, most of them are happy that the Browns are in. They just don't want like the, the Steelers to be in. So I think they're happy about that. Some of them you get like, I don't really care. Some of them are like, good for you. You finally know what it's like. It just varies from who you talk to. A lot of them are, but it's some, a lot of them so are like, if we can't be in. Up. I'm glad they're in. Yeah. Um, no, so like last year, I know there was a huge contingency of people that was, uh, they were saying, you know, Cincinnati's in the playoffs and this is Browns fans I'm talking about. They were saying we need to root for Cincinnati because they're an Ohio team and we want them to win the Super Bowl. But we on this show, we're firmly against that. We're like, it's still a division rival. Are you nuts? Like we never want Cincinnati to win a Super Bowl ever. (laughs) Um, what, what are, what are your thoughts on that? I don't like I don't want Cincinnati to win a Super Bowl because the fans are obnoxious, and that's all I got to hear about how they have a Super Bowl ring in that. You know, because our six before it was called a Super Bowl doesn't count, which absolutely blows my mind because it's a championship, and the NFL was harder back then. 
you know, you can play three plays and you're coming out. There was people out there that was playing offense and defense and going in on special teams and getting concussions and knocked out and then getting smelling salt and thrown back in the game. <laughs> you know, and they're, and back in the day, like, you would see old photos of, like, Otto Graham getting his head taken off, and he's back in there on the next play throwing a, a bomb to Marion Molly or something. And you're going, how do these players do that back then? Because you couldn't get away with it now. So it, it just it kind of blows my mind to listen to him go. Hey, we at least we made the Super Bowl, and it's like but you don't have a championship, you don't have a ring, you have a you have two AFC championship trophies in in a case, and that's it. We have we have AFC North or we have a uh, division championships in our case. We have championship rings in our case. We got all that stuff. So it, it just I just tell them to be quiet. You know, at least win something yeah. once, and then talk to me. You know, yeah, no. They just got their uh, second. They just got the thing about this. They just they've been an organization since 1968, and they just finally put in their second Hall of Famer this year. Who, honestly, I tell everybody, he was 20 years too late. He should have been in 20 years ago. Ken Riley doesn't lead the NFL in interceptions for almost two decades and not get into the uh, or Hall of Fame. He should have been in there 20 years ago. I mean. I know a lot of Browns fans that have that share that same sentiment. When you're a great player, you're a great player and you should be in. And he was a great player, but you've only put in your second Hall of Famer in two in, since 1968. It's like, come on, we've, I think we've put in two since then, if I'm not mistaken, maybe one, but I know Joe Thomas. Yeah, gonna be a, uh, Joe Thomas, uh, there's going to be another one here soon because I'm pretty sure in the next few years, uh, uh, Josh Cribbs is going to get in as a uh, returner. So. Uh, last great returner, but well, I think uh, the, I think the next major one to get in is going to be Joe Batonio. As far yeah, uh, as far as when he retires, and, yeah, and, yeah. I mean, I I would agree with that, and and they've got a couple of people, a couple guys on that line that are uh, probably going to be borderline. Well, it there. depends on how long they keep playing, uh, yeah, at a high level. Um, Brian, so I'm sorry if I missed this. Did, are you from Northeast Ohio originally, or are you was, born and raised in Cincinnati? Born in Youngstown, Ohio, but I moved down to Cincinnati when I was nine months old. So I kind of, in 1986, I became like a big fan of football. I was 13, and I was like, man, I really, and I, I like Cincinnati's offense, but I really fell in love with Cleveland's defense. I was a big Hanford Dixon fan, and I was a big Clay Matthews fan. I was like, man, I really love their defense. They just smother and kill people, like Michael Dean Perry, the rest of them. <laughs> And then about 91 was my senior year, and all my Cincinnati friends were like, oh, you're either with us or against us. You're a traitor, blah, blah, blah. And all my Cleveland Browns friends were like, we don't really care which way you do. We're, we're loyal. We don't really care what you feel like doing. So it was more like one was forcing me to be a fan. The other one was like, if you want to be a fan, go ahead. If you don't, you know, fine. And then they hired Dave Shula, who was Don Shula's son, who coached Division One AA. And I was like, this team's just going to trash. So I was like, you know what, since 1992, I pledged my allegiance to the Browns 100% without rooting for both teams. And then when we were out of the nice. league, I didn't really vote for anybody. I, I kind of adopted yeah. Carolina because I lived in Carolina for a while. But And then um, and so I moved down here when I was nine months old and been a Browns fan since. Nice. Awesome. Um no, and so uh, with with all that being said, um, and again, we the, it's a gr that's a good story because we we kind of see that um, people tend to move away from the area or move away from Ohio in general. There's a lot of transplants uh, from the state of Ohio, um, or even within the state of Ohio, uh, and and you guys help move these Browns backers organizations all over the place and keep them going and keep them uh, vibrant and alive. Um, but with all of this being said, you know, we talked about the Browns, how they're doing this year. We talked about the Cincinnati fans, everything else. Um, even though this game has absolutely no meaning tomorrow, uh, I'm sorry, this weekend. Um, what is your prediction for this game, knowing the Browns are probably going to be resting their starters? And hell, Cincinnati might rest, rest their starters, too, because there's nothing to play for. <laughs> I really don't know how this game is going to turn out, to be honest with you. I mean, <laughs> the, the, uh, the heart of me says... Yeah, I really want the Browns are going to win. They're going to dominate them. But I mean, it wouldn't break my heart if we didn't win the game either because we don't have anybody starting. I mean, we have our third stringers and fourth stringers starting and, you know, they may still play like Mixon or Chase and that for maybe a quarter or two just so they're not rusty or whatever and then bring up the score and then take them out. So I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. 
I don't know what the really the score is going to be. It wouldn't shock me if Cincinnati won. It wouldn't shock me if Cleveland blew them out this weekend. Now, if we were going for the number one seed and everything else, I would have made a prediction of like 34 to 13 Browns because I know that we would be playing hard and that defense would be smothering for that number one seed and for that first round by. But with everybody, with everybody sitting, resting, getting that 14 days rest that they really need to get ready for the playoffs, which is huge. Because no other team really has that right now. Baltimore will have it. Baltimore will have it like the ex- one extra week than we will because obviously they're going to rest their starters next week because they don't have anything to play for. They locked up number one, so there's no point in getting them injured. So they may have an extra six days of rest than we do. But everybody else has got to play this weekend, and they've got to play for everything this weekend. I mean, it's it's just crazy to me to think that Miami has had – control of that AFC East and they could actually lose it to Bal- or Buffalo this weekend. It's crazy to me to think that yeah. Jacksonville was supposed right. to be the preseason dominant. You've got three people that are tied with the same record that one of them could sneak in and win it. So, yep. you know, there, there's a lot of teams playing for playoff hopes this weekend and it's nice to know that we're not. We're just resting. Yep. So, I really don't really have a score prediction. I mean, well, we're going to hold you to one anyway. So. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's go. Twenty-one seventeen, Cleveland. I, I like it. it. I like it. I, I actually, uh, it, it, we'll get to our predictions later in the episode, but I have it as a close game as well, just because it's going to be backups versus backups versus backups. This is just all backups. Uh, no. So uh, before we get going here, though, Brian, um, I do want to mention. Uh, that we are brought to you by who, Kenny? Seaside Events as the official cruise event provider of the Cleveland Browns and the organizer of the Browns Fan Cruise. And so with that in mind, uh, they did run a competition for Browns backers. Uh, however, that is over and the uh, winners were announced. It was the Browns backers of Pinellas uh, that won that competition. Uh, however, we still want to say that we will be emceeing multiple events aboard the ship and there will be 17 alumni joining the cruise uh, that fans will get to mingle with like they're normal people. So uh, for anybody that's thinking about going but hasn't gotten tickets yet, make sure you get those tickets because it's going to be a lot of fun. Cabin's still available. Yep. Um, and then one last thing for us, uh, we do want to mention to you and your chapter and anybody else watching uh, to uh, not forget to call into our hot take hotline. Um, and what this is, it's a voicemail that we've set up for Browns fans to literally call in and vent um, that could be that could be happy venting. That could be sad venting. That could be angry venting. It could be all the above in one single voicemail. Uh, but just it, it's set up for fans so they can call in and talk about the Browns and just get whatever they need to off their chest. So what's the number for that, Kenny? Three three zero two two seven eight zero eight zero. We'll throw it on the screen here on the video version as well. But again, that's three three zero two two seven eight zero eight zero. We'd love to hear from uh, our Browns faithful down in, in Cincinnati. Yep. And so, uh, before we, uh, come, we, we bring this interview to a close here, Brian, I do want to, uh, ask you, uh, if you have anything to say to Cleveland fans that maybe they've moved away from home, um, and, or in a new area or missing their fellow Browns fans or potentially thinking about, uh, joining a Browns backers chapter. So joining a Browns backers chapter is a lot easier than you think. The Browns this year actually set up a new website. It's brownsbackersworldwide.com. And you can actually find a chapter close to you a lot easier. You'd be surprised how many chapters there are in different cities. Cincinnati actually has four chapters in Cincinnati. Four official. We have one that thinks that they're a Browns Backers bar, but they're not. They're not official. (laughs) Um, They like to break rules and stuff, but I won't mention them. But we have four in Cincinnati alone. And there are people that didn't even know that there was one. So you definitely want to go on Browns Backers Worldwide, put in your zip code or put in where your city you're at. And you can do that if you're visiting, too. We've had visitors come in all the time. Hey, I'm from so-and-so, and, you know, we'll make them an honorary member for the day. So we'll give them, like, the wristband so they can get the discount on the drinks and the beer and stuff for us. Because we want to set that good example of, hey, you know, we're a club that likes to have fun. We hope that you come back to us. We hope that you spread the word to us. So you definitely can find out where we're at by joining that. Or now with Facebook, there's lots of Facebook groups. So you can pretty much put in, like, Browns backers Cincinnati and it'll list all the Browns backers or Browns backers Virginia Beach and it'll, it'll list it for you. So it's very easy nowadays to find a Browns backers club than it was probably about 10 years ago. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I will say this, uh, you brought up uh, the fact that uh, if you're traveling, uh, especially if you're traveling traveling anywhere with the team, uh, for example, if they're playing in Cincinnati, uh, look up the Brownsbackers groups in Cincinnati because most of the time those Brownsbackers groups are having big parties uh, when the Browns are visiting their city. So Yeah, it seems like uh, a lot of those are like the night before they have those big Browns backers bashes. So it's definitely a fun time. It sounds like from, from the backers that we've talked to this year, it seems like that's pretty commonplace. Absolutely. And so, uh, but listen, Brian, it has been absolutely amazing having you on. We really appreciate you joining us. Uh, thank you so much. And we hope to get down there to Cincinnati and meet you in person sometime soon. Absolutely. Well, there's a party going on Saturday. I'm just saying from four to seven, you're more than welcome. <laughs> we'll see what we'll we see can what do. do. <laughs> sounds All right, good. Thanks, guys. Brian. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. I had fun. I appreciate you guys. Hi, this is Brian from the Greater Cincinnati Brownsbackers, and you're listening to the Burning River Sportscast. Go Browns! <laughs>